Okay, now I'm going to do some demonstration about rubber dam isolation. First for endo. And I don't know if you guys know about it, but whenever you're doing the endo portion for CDCA ADEX, you can choose if you want to start from number 14 or from number 8. But as long as you do one isolation just for number 14 and then after you finish you remove the whole thing and then you do another one specific for number eight okay so or you do the opposite you do number eight you finish and then you remove then you go to the other one you cannot go from here to the other side and do both at the same time okay so this is my frame this is the rubber dam the rubber dam there is a shine a shiny side and there is a side that is not so shiny the shiny side is going to be up the position of the rubber dam there are some people that they prefer to to perforate it without the frame but i think it's easier for me with the frame so the sequence is always like that patient first then the rubber dam then the frame right and the frame will be at this way to follow the curvature of the patient like imagine that the patient is here so it has to follow the curvature of the patient you never place it the opposite way like this okay so here we go and we grab the rubber and we pinch with those little pins that you have at the frame right and then you can have a scissor i don't have a clinical one so i have a home one you can have like some little pieces of rubber because you're gonna need that I will show you why in a minute there is something called wedget that is gonna do the same but you don't need to buy that okay that's it so now you have your typodont over there and let's start with the front ones so patient's mouth needs to be in the middle you never go like this or you never go toward the base like this so the arch should be in the middle of the frame like this to collect you know the the irrigation liquid that you're gonna do so it's gonna be like this so you go here then you get a sharpie and you mark from K9 this is the prost endo model right so K9 then lateral central central lateral canine and even premolar so now you get the perforator you have the sizes of the perforator you can use for premolars i like to use this one so i don't like to mark over there because sometimes it goes like this so i prefer sometimes even to follow like my own direction but anyway premolar here i'm going to show you that you can do without perforation as long as you do some spaces in between and you give um curvature for the arch like canine 
lateral. So did you see that I changed it to the to a smaller one for the incisors? Lateral central central lateral canine. Okay, so you don't necessarily need the clamp here for this premolar area. That's why you're gonna use that. You can cut it in half. Then you started to apply on the premolar. And then you stabilize it with this. You fold it. Fold it again. And then you pull it. And you go on the distal of the premolar. And leave it this way. So now get the other holes one by one, like this. It is kind of tricky, but you go one by one. Make sure you don't jump. Sometimes you're gonna need floss to go through, to help to go through. I could go to the premolar if I didn't do any prep yet for, for prostodontics here, like make a hole here, or even go with the clamp. But I can show you that you can go this way. So, but before that, let me get some floss. Then, you go on the area that you see that the rubber didn't go all the way down and you go several times until you see it going down. Especially for restorative because for restorative you're going to do the same way when you're doing like number 9 or number 7, number 8, 7, 9, something like that you're gonna do some ligatures as well where is the other piece of rubber i don't find it you can get a piece from yeah yeah so again you can go fold it go to the canine light floss make it to go through Wet jet is like floss, but a rubber one, very wide, that you go this way. Cut axis, of course, you don't want it on your way. And for restorative, you're going to do the same. But for the teeth that you're working with, like for example, you see this number 10, the rubber and number 11. The rubber is not going all the way down. So what you do here, you can do something called ligature. You go more with the floss, like this. And then you get your probe. Then you go, or a spoon excavator or something like that. You bring the rubber and the floss down because otherwise the rubber is going to interfere in your prep and your restoration you know what i mean same thing here for this number eight and then the way you're gonna do the knot is gonna be like this let's do on this number nine because it's gonna be bigger it's gonna be easier to to see so you go through and you pull it, you bring the rubber down, 
with the floss and an instrument and then in the front you're gonna tighten it this way you're gonna get the two tips you're gonna make a loop then you're gonna go with the two tips inside of the loop like this and then you're gonna get the two tips and you're gonna pull them toward opposing directions and before you tight it completely try to go down here to the cervical before you tight it completely you make sure that you go again on lingual with the probe to make sure that the floss is going to be below the equator of the tooth then you tight it then you cut so this is the ligature okay you can do for more teeth if you want this to make this kind of unstable and then in order to remove this is very easy you just go when you finish you just go here where you have the knot you capture underneath it with the, your probe and you just pull it and it's gonna untie it like this okay if you want to include number five if it's not prepared because if you did prost before endo you're not going to put not going to be able to put any clamp here right why you would go here because when you're doing number eight if you go more to the back you're gonna get more space to work here with your file okay if you go with less teeth you're gonna be too close the rubber is going to be too close to the lingual surface of the tooth that you're working but this way you're gonna have more room so if you want to clamp it's the same thing you get the clamp like a, a premolar clamp like this one if you have the hole you go through or you can even leave it the, the way it is right now, like without the hole. You get the clamp with the clamp holder. You have those holes. Guys, I'm demonstrating this because maybe this is pretty obvious for some people like endodontist, you know. But there are several people that they have no clue about that, like orthodontist or a surgeon. So I have to do like in a way that as nobody knows how to do it, okay? So that would be your isolation, okay? For the number eight. Okay, now I'm gonna um, finish this video. I'm gonna make another one just for number 14, okay?